Welcome back and we are glad that you are still with us. This is Good Morning Kenya. My name is Vivian Degwa and now we get into our health segment. Health check it is. Today being a Tuesday, you know that that is how we do it right here on Good Morning Kenya. And our topic of conversation today is on breast cancer and we'll be looking at ways to manage breast cancer. You know how to just go about uh, working on your mental health, working on your treatments and so on and so forth. And joining me for this this particular conversation is one Jane Njagwa. Jane Njagwa is a mental health therapist. She is an addiction counselor. She is the CEO, Global Voice of the Voiceless, and a breast cancer survivor. Welcome to the show. Thank you. You're doing all right this morning? I am doing very well. I'm blessed. I cannot complain. We love that. We Thank love that. You. All right, before we get into our main topic of conversation, maybe you can tell us a bit about what you do as the CEO of the Global Global Voice of the Voiceless, what it's all about. Global Voice is a non-profit organization that feeds the people experiencing homelessness. It also educates orphans and also touches vulnerable people that don't have a voice. We speak for you, so meaning if you, people have ruled you out, if you don't have education money, things like that, mm -hmm. Global Voice comes in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're also an addiction counselor? Yes, I uh, am. Yeah. Yeah, and um, because addictions is also another mental health, uh, another health issue, mm -hmm. and so, and I come from a family that learns that learns addiction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, addiction learns in my family. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, um, as a breast cancer survivor, I want us to. Um, you, I want you to give us your story, you know, because I'm sure maybe there's someone who's watching who would gain some inspiration from that, or rather even, you know, just get the, 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 the urge to keep fighting after they, you know, them seeing you here as a survivor of breast cancer, because most of the times people say that, oh, cancer is a death sentence. So whenever you're diagnosed with it, then it's the end of you. But we just want, you know, to give the voice to the people out there, just to let them know that they will be able to fight through it. So if you can just take me through your journey of cancer, when first were you diagnosed with a cancer? Which year was it? Uh, that was 2022. Mm -hmm. Yes, and um, I was just sitting in my office rejecting to go for mammogram because um, the name cancer has never been in my mind. I, I, I hear it, I see it, but I've never thought it can occur to me. Mm -hmm. So um, I kept changing not to go for the mammogram, but one day I decided, you know what? They keep calling me, let me go for the mammogram, and that is the day I was diagnosed, and they told me they are seeing some carousifications, which are like, if I can explain a little bit, it's like dots, nothing, no, not human, no, nothing I could feel, and that is when they told me mm -hmm. they need to do a biopsy. And then when they did a biopsy, the day came when they said, um, I have breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And my life changed from that time because mm -hmm. when you hear the name cancer, you'll be like, what? Um, you know, you don't know the stage. And that is uh, if you don't have any support, if you don't have good way of feeling that name come to you, you'll be very scared. You'll be, it's the end of the world. So. Uh, that is where my life started and from there I went and got checked and um, then I had to do um, a mastectomy mm. and you know as a woman when you do a mastectomy you can have a self raw esteem because you feel like without the breast like something have gone out of you and being a woman that's mm. a major something that can cause mental health. Mm -hmm. Yeah and yeah. then from there um, I went for treatment and I started by having uh, to have the breast taken out, they can say mastectomy, yeah. and then to reconstructive, where you get another breast if you choose. It can come from silicone, but you have to stay with silicone for some time so that you can expand, mm -hmm. because the skin have to be expanded. And then from there you choose if you want to have silicone, if you want your, uh, they take meat from your stomach, from here, from your back, mm -hmm. wherever you have skin, if you, are, if you have a good candidate, they will take that and give you a new breast. And that is what happened to me. And you can see I, I look <laughs> good. Yes. You do look very yes. good. Yes, so it's not a killer. It's not a killer. Yeah. No, it can actually be a start of your journey. Because mm. sometimes um, I am a Christian and sometimes 
your life my my life was going very well i actually attend i was just um going through my doctorate classes and i thought my life is on the roof yeah. but however sometimes god will knock on your door and tell you uh, you are very far come close yeah. and cancer brought me very close to god so yeah. that because I, I had to call him to ask him what stage and then because of early detection yeah. i was on zero stage but the calcifications had gone to all corners of my breast mm -hmm. and That's so instead of to do the mild to me yes you are sh you have to choose whether you want them to take the where the the calcifications are mm -hmm. uh, like cause they'll be at 12 o'clock nine o'clock six o'clock like the whole um of the milk dark and so the best thing is to just choose to have the mastectomy yeah. because you don't want to be like you take it out there and then you keep getting worried did they travel on the other side so myself i choose the mastectomy all right Bef uh, before we even uh, continue with how your life you know went on after that maybe were there any symptoms that you were experiencing before you went in for the checkup nothing at all you didn't get any symptoms w whatsoever no yeah no nothing yeah yeah so that's why we you know doctors and the health practitioners keep up advocating for just checkups yes you know sometimes maybe before it shows any kind of signs it's at a very a later stage yes so early detection is really really important very important yeah very very important mm -hmm. yes and um when you were talking earlier you know um away from the cameras you told me that you battled it for just a year yes tell me about that because many people maybe may battle it for years. You know, yours was just a year. Yes, Tell because um, when I when I when I realized I have it, the first thing is to accept you have it, mm. and then what is the second thing? The second thing is to look for the treatment. So after the treatment, the reason why I have battled it very quickly is because uh, after I realized I'm I'm detected at a very early stage, mm -hmm. the treatment becomes easier. Because if you, are, if you are diagnosed at a later stage, you have to do chemo, you have to do radiation. And because of my early stage, all those were ruled out. So I will come from having the mastectomy to reconstructive because I am at an at early stage. But like I say, if you are later stage, you will start with all those things that will take you almost to one year, two years before the doctor can be able to even know, can they treat you mm -hmm. and how can they treat you? So early detection is very, very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, wa I want to take you back to the moment when um, you went for that um, mammogram, right? And then the doctor told you that, okay, you, 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 you may be having... Um, you know breast cancer you you have breast cancer what was your first reaction like how was that moment like for you i passed out yeah i was very shocked i was in the office and i am a therapist i was giving therapy to another person and uh, my head just was blank mm -hmm. i had to give the phone to somebody else to receive the news for me mm -hmm. yeah yeah and where does someone start from there? Because I know that's the same for so many people. Because none of us is out here hope, or thinking that they would get, you know, um, breast cancer or any other type of cancer or any other disease, you know, um, you know, looking at it that way. So where, where does one start from there? The number one thing is to accept yeah. the disease is here and you can't take it out. So once you accept you you what is your support system is mm -hmm. it your family is mm -hmm. it your friends is it uh, depending on who is your support system then you start from there like where you accept mm -hmm. and then you start going for other tests because mm -hmm. it can be they mis, 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 they might have seen like it is cancer but it's not cancer so they're gonna go through other tests are they gonna go through other scans mm -hmm. and then from there you're gonna go and see your doctor yeah the surgeon will tell you like um you need mastectomy you need to be treated there are so many ways you can get this done mm -hmm. but if it is an um the, uh, the later stages like mm -hmm. i said earlier then that is where you start the chemos and radiation before they can even do anything else mm -hmm. so yeah mm -hmm. all right um th there's that point where I say that you know most people look at it as a death sentence mm -hmm. maybe for someone who's watching right now and they've just received such a diagnosis what would you say to them I would first tell them it's gonna shock them that is true mm -hmm. 
they're gonna have um they're gonna have they, they will cry and if you have to cry just do it because if you cross the tears inside you it becomes another illness mm. and so because um once you accept once you cry once you finish that then the next thing is accept it if you look at me uh, honestly i actually became more prettier than when i didn't have it so once you accept and you go to the stages mm. i am I, I am over 50 years of age mm -hmm. so just know that when you accept you have the mastectomy you're gonna get new boobs like for a young girl you know <laughs> so you <laughs> just accept i love and that then, the way you're looking at the positive side of it you have yeah. to because mm -hmm. if you look at the negative you're yeah. gonna have depression yeah. you're gonna go down it's like when you're having a marathon and you look at it this way if you go if you stay down people gonna step on you yep. but if you remember martin luther said if you cannot walk just crawl mm. if you cannot well, if you cannot learn walk whatever happens keep moving keep moving yeah. even if it's moving your hand keep mm. moving because mm -hmm. it's gonna be tough i'm not gonna lie to you it's a very tough journey but if you want to stay on the negative you're gonna get tougher but if you want to stay on the positive where you see uh i remember that lady me she didn't look sick mm. and i'm still going through treatment mm. you know but if you accept it and be positive you won't be able to battle depression. I am actually, um, I talk about it very openly because it's just another disease. It's not a killer. No, many people have, sufficed, have survived. Mm. But one thing I realized, when you, people hear you have cancer, they are the ones that kill you. It's not even, it's not even what you're going through because you can tell people being very shocked. They actually show you like you are dying. And so you have to be very careful how you receive the people you are telling. They will be very, uh, they'll be like the ones kidding you. you yeah. yeah, so where if to whoever is battling this, uh, just stay positive. Mm -hmm. Whoever you are telling, if they tell you, wow, oh, you have it? Oh, yeah, I have it. And it's a regular disease just like any other. And you got this. Mm. You got this. Once you accept, and my, my said, this is very important. How do you feel? You feel down, but I told you, as long as you're moving a little bit, you got this. Mm. And if you remember me, positive, positive attitude will take you many, 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 many places. And it's not a killer disease. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, something else with, with the cancer generally, not just breast cancer, is that this treatment is quite costly. Mm -hmm. You know, so maybe what can you talk uh, talk about that? You know, what can you say about the costs of cancer? Yes, it's very, very costly. Mm -hmm. And that is where your support, support system comes in. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you might not have insurance. And that is where now you join people that the groups that have people struggling just like you. And let somebody know, mm -hmm. a lot of people hide breast cancer. Mm -hmm. It is like they feel, if I tell people I have cancer, they're gonna see death. Mm. in them mm. but talk about it if you have to find this if you have if you don't have insurance if you have family because it's a very expensive um way of doing this yeah. you don't have to have reconstructive and have breast uh if you look at yourself and think you're only pretty you ha if you have the breast you have long way to go mm. because breast is is just a part of a, bo a body just like the eyes and anywhere else because as a woman we feel you must have a chest. Mm. Uh, a man will only want you uh, if you have a good ba body. Mm. If your man wants you because you have a good body, he is not. Um, he's not somebody you want to stay with. Mm. You. So to me, um, I would say talk about it. Join the groups uh, that you, that can actually help you. There is somebody somewhere who are battled like me, mm. and somebody like. Let's say somebody is in the village somewhere and they don't have the money. Mm. That is where we come in, yeah. Global Voice of the Voiceless, mm. where you, where, where it's, it's called Global Voice of the Voiceless, mm. where every voice is golden. So speak up, remember this, and just look for Global Voice. We will be there for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's the importance of joining such groups when you're battling such, you know, such a disease? What's the importance of just being in the presence of people who understand you? You know, you can tell me about it, but since I haven't gone through it, I haven't experienced it, it might be a bit, you know, I wouldn't be feeling you the same way that someone else who's gone through the same thing get to understand you. So why is it so important or what's the importance, you know, 
I want you to just amplify the importance of one being in such groups. Once you know you have um, that disease or maybe any other, you find groups of people with the same. Because once you join groups of people going through what you are going through, mm -hmm. you don't know you didn't even have anything. You might be going through mastectomy of one side. Mm -hmm. There's somebody going through mastectomy. He is, he, they are diabetic. They are having their leg cut. And you're just saying, I have one breast. And so when you join those groups, they support you. They let you know you are not alone. And you feel be able to open up because if you feel some if you if you are with a, another woman who have gone through mastectomy and so it's the same mm -hmm. we're gonna communicate mm -hmm. you might think you know everything but the other woman might tell you something you don't know so it's always good to be joining those groups for your support system mm -hmm. the coping skills i might be using might not be working for me but the other woman has some other coping skills that can help me better so once we share in the group and we are open because we are all going through the same thing. That is where now you find, oh, I thought I was the worst. No, but there's somebody who is going through worse things than you, and they are actually going to work. They are actually vibrant. Their life is thriving. Mm -hmm. So that is where you get to see, oh, why am I down? And then they lift you up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do we have enough of such groups or better? We, we can do better in terms of opening such we can do better by opening maybe. such yeah. because a lot of people, cancer is now very, very, very home. Mm. And the reason I say that is my cancer is not a family cancer. Mm. Uh, we don't have cancer in my family. So I underwent treat, some treatment to know because of my daughter. I wanted to know, is it a, is mm. it a family Genetic. disease? Yeah. But it's not. Mm. So because of that, cancer is here because mine is age cancer related once and it's hormonal related environmental the food that i've been eating the things i've been doing mm. so people have not don't have a lot of groups because cancer has been hidden a lot of people don't say it because well, actually when it's breast a lot of people don't say about it mm. but a lot of groups need to be set up so that we can support people because to be honest with you, if we don't change the way we are living cancer is here mm -hmm. yeah yeah and uh, i uh, you've you've brought up the issue of you know what you eat can also be the cause maybe what lifestyles changes did you have to take from then on you know in terms of your, your nutrition you know your diet and so on first of all cancer hates stress mm. cancer hates sugar cancer hates junk food mm. cancer likes greens uh, regular good food mm. that is what you need to do exercise mm -hmm. is very important mm -hmm. uh, meditation is very important mm -hmm. and also your support system all those included you cannot just do the diet because you can do the diet but you are living under a stressful um, environment uh, but first of all sugar is one thing that you have to rule out and then from there on you change to a very good healthy diet forget about the junk food the chicken they might look good mm -hmm. but they are not gonna be good for you mm -hmm. yeah so you lean more on the vegetables the, the fruits and and general you can eat it depends with the portion you can we have a lot of good food here in kenya yeah. so as long as the food is not the one that was fried with a lot of grease the junk food uh, as long as you eat good health balanced diet you got this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. You got yeah, this. You got this, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what was your biggest challenge during that treatment journey? The biggest challenge was um, sometimes I would see as if um, it can come, because mine came on the light side, and once it's gone a little bit, it goes to leave, um, leave nodes. Mm. These are like here on your, they, they, they are, that is the way the cancer travels in your body yeah, so okay. my biggest challenge was like my leaf nodes hide themselves mm. and i did not know did it spread to the other one mm -hmm. and also how do i tell my children how do i tell my family so those were the challenges i had i had to speak to myself i had to meditate because the way you deliver this message to your children to your parents to your family um, matters a lot. So that was my challenging moments on how I will communicate that I have breast cancer. Yeah. yeah. And how do you do that? Where does someone start? You know, how do you approach the people who love you the most knowing that, you know, how this um, condition is viewed? How do you approach them and tell them that, okay, depending this is what is on, happening? Depending on who they are, let's say if you are in Nairobi town where you mm -hmm. can uh, Google some things, 
um, you're going to call a meeting mm. and you're going to be smiling and you're going to show your children it is here but it is not here to stay. Mm. A lot of people have battled this. Mm -hmm. So once you let them know, cheerfully and showing them the treatment works and it's 99% survival, mm -hmm. then you'll be able to explain to them that so that they can support you, mm -hmm. um, that um, you, you have it, but they'll be able to support you because, but once you go with depression, once you go to them crying or things like that, you are, you are not only the one who had cancer now, but you have spread, even though it's not the physical cancer, but you have spread the disease to your children. Mm. But once you let them know step by step, uh, it's here, it's, it's, I have accepted, and take your time. Uh, talk to somebody else. You know, if you can deliver it, let somebody else deliver it in a good way, because you can break somebody completely by the way you deliver the news. Yeah. But it is just breast cancer. It's just like any other disease. Mm -hmm. And once you let them know that, depending with the age of your children, the age of your parents, and depending on how you break the news, but let them, uh, let them have a meeting, let, let them be, explain to them that it is curable and all that. And believe me not, give them an example of a woman you know that have breast cancer. People have fought this. Mm -hmm. I'm not the only one and they will understand mm -hmm. yeah that's very true and when we talk about uh, support systems i know we've talked about it in terms of the groups you know the people who share the same experience with you but what are the support support systems in in terms of family you know sometimes you may need caregivers while going through that what's What's the importance of that support system? And this is also for maybe any relative who's out there and they have um, someone in the family who's battling the same. Just to let them know how important it is to have people around you who would be willing to look after you. Because sometimes it gets to a point where you really need help in terms of who is around you, who's, you know, looking yeah. after you. Support system from family is very important mm. because the, 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 when you are going through this, you're going to have fatigue. You're going to be staying in bed most of the time. Mm -hmm. So your support system have to walk with you by, uh, by wearing your shoe. Like mm -hmm. empathy and understanding that whatever she's going through can cause depression. So yeah. be, be gentle. Like um, if, they, are, if they, they have fatigue, uh, be there for them. Like tell them how to walk. Like walk, walk with them. Go to talk to them. And also... Um, understand uh, that they need you at this given time. Mm -hmm. If they cry, let them cry. But however, be very gentle. Remember, it's, it's, a, it's somebody going through cancer. Cancer is not easy. But once you accept um, and your family is there, if you don't have family, there are some people, friends come more than family. Mm -hmm. Whoever you call family might not be who I call family. But a, as long as you have support system, you will get through this because there are sometimes you'll be down. There are sometimes you'll be feeling fatigued. There are sometimes you feel like you don't want to talk to nobody. Mm -hmm. Just let them understand those days that you don't want to talk to nobody. Don't push. Don't pressure that person mm -hmm. because the medication we go through can sometimes I don't feel like I really want to talk. Don't take them personal. Just encourage them. Uh, just support them. Let them eat with you and things like that. Yeah, and most times what, what they need is the, that peace of mind. Yes. You know, and it's, it's really important when you're battling such, yes. right? Sometimes you don't even have to say a word. Mm. Just by sitting right there, that's it. Just by giving a hug, that's it. Just by asking, would you like to take some water? That's it. You don't have to talk because you might use words that can, if you are, let's say like, uh, you, you might use some words that are harsh, but you did not know. You yeah, didn't mean it. Me. You didn't mean it. So yeah. if you don't know what to say, mm -hmm. just be there and be very quiet. It, it, it means a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, you know, mental health during this time or during a, a time when you're battling such is really, really important. So I would love to know how can someone go about keeping their mental health in check, being that you're actually a mental health therapist. So how can someone just, what steps to take in order for them to have their mental health in check? And we'll, we'll actually um, get to speak about that uh, in a moment. Uh, if we can just maybe take the breakfast and then when you come back, you give us the steps. We try now look at the mental health bit of it, how to try and manage that. Some people even get into addiction just from that. So we'll get back and talk about the steps that one would take.
you know, in order to just make sure that they keep their mental health in check. We take a short break right now. Don't you go too far. We'll be back to continue with that. Search or while going through the breast cancer treatment? The first thing is to accept mm -hmm. yourself mm -hmm. that you have cancer because mm -hmm. it has a lot of denial. There are five stages of grief mm -hmm. and the five stages of grief, the first one is denial. Mm -hmm. You hear like you have cancer and I had denial. I had to ask the doctor so many times. So you say this at a stage and so I don't have it. So the first thing is to accept you have it. Mm. The second thing is to look for specialist who will be conducting your treatment because mm -hmm. there are so many people but who is good for your treatment. Mm -hmm. The second, the third thing is to rally people, your support system, who will you lean on. Take time, be gentle to yourself. Don't be like harsh to yourself because you need yourself. Because at long last, you are the one who got yourself. And then after you know the, 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 the surgeon or the treatment place, you are gentle to yourself. Now it's time for the treatment. When you are going through treatment, it can bring depression. There are some sides that you cannot afford to cry, to look at yourself and see as if it's the end of the world. That will come. But remember, when that door knocks on you, mm -hmm. there is something that replaces. It's, um, there is, we, sometimes we do treatment uh, therapies, like it's called cognitive behavior therapy, where you replace the bad mental with the good one. Mm -hmm. And it will tell you, Jane, you have cancer, you don't have a long to live. You have to remember the other side, no, I, I have. That's not me, you are talking to the wrong person. Mm -hmm. So those are the copy, you have to have like five affirmations, cause it, it will always knock. But once it knocks, sometimes it is the day you feel somebody dies of breast cancer. And you feel like, wow, they died? Mm -hmm. We were in the same group, so I'm gonna die too. No, you ain't gonna die too, because if death is inevitable. But we don't want to die because somebody else has died. You don't know what they were eating. You don't know whether they followed the, the right thing. Mm -hmm. be, be, be educated. Look for education. Look for people like us. Look for the group support system so that you'll be able to handle this without depression. Mm -hmm. there, there, there is a lot of stress. Like when you are going through treatment, there is a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. Like when you are going through the surgeries. Like be gentle. Just know it cannot rain forever. If it rains today, tomorrow is sunshine. Mm. So just remember when you are going through those steps, I did not say it's going to be easy. No. But what I said is, depending on how you take it, you can easy it for yourself. Mm. But if you want to bring it very difficult and you are not gentle to yourself, believe me, there are so many people that have depression coming from this. Yeah. What else do people do? Mm. They cover it with alcohol and drugs. Yeah. Please don't cover it with nothing. Because the moment you cover it with drugs, you have gotten to another disease of addiction. Once you have de um, depression, mm -hmm. you have three things now. If only you could have done breast cancer by itself, mm -hmm. you didn't have to have addiction, you didn't have to have mental health. And guess what? Once you cover it with alcohol, tomorrow, do you still have breast cancer? Well, yeah. You still have it. Do you still have to go through mastectomy? Yes, but right, right now you can't even go through the mastectomy the right way because the doctor has to give you medication that are for a person who is taking alcohol. So if only you can be able to be gentle to yourself, remember uh, it, you, it cannot rain forever. Remember, the, if you have the best specialist, like you remember you took the best, you, have, you, you got this. But mental health is real when it comes to cancer, mm -hmm. but you don't have to have mental health. Mm -hmm. Depression will knock, anxiety will knock. Mm -hmm. Stress, there is some good stress and bad stress. Mm -hmm. Just remember, don't be on the bad stress. The, take, the, take the good stress, because you can't live in this world and don't have stress. Mm -hmm. Mental health is a taboo in our culture. Mm -hmm. yeah. People have a stigma about it. Mm -hmm. I tell you this, mental health is very important, mm -hmm. because how do you know the coping skills? You are crying every day because you have breast cancer. Mm -hmm. How will you know how to go to the next step? But if you go to a therapist and have a connection, you will, she will be able or he will be able to guide you how to go next so that you don't have to have any depression, any anxiety, any stress. Mm -hmm. But always remember, I did not say it's going to be easy but you can make it easy for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And it all starts in the mind. Yes. Once you have a positive outlook, yes. I believe there's really nothing that you can't tackle. It can't, it's going to be hard, yes, as you yes. keep saying, it's yes. not going to be easy. Mm -hmm. But as long as your mental state is, you're looking at life 
you're living on the positive side of yes, life, yes. as yes. some would say. Yes. You feel like that's that's the best way to go at it first. Oh yes, mindset is uh, when you set up your mind to do something, mm -hmm. sky is not the limit. The mindset is very important because it's the only one that will be able to walk you through this. If you have the positive, like you are saying, mm -hmm. you will be able to tackle this. But if you have a negative, you'll only be seeing death. You only be seeing, oh, it spreads from this one. You're going to go to this one. Then that's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But if you're positive and say, oh, I got it. It's, it's just like a, a regular disease and I will handle it. Then you will be able to. But negativity will never take you anywhere. That is where you're going to have stress, depression. And like I say, you're going to cover it to some, something else. Your skin can even tell mm. that you are loud but silent. So just remember, you don't have to say nothing for people to know, wow, she looks different these days. Mm. Because you're not even speaking it out. You're not, um, you not even gentle to yourself. So mental health, mental side, uh, mindset is very important when you're dealing not only with breast cancer. Anything that you handle in this world, Mental, um, your mindset is very important. Yeah. yeah, and I can imagine for someone who's battling, you know, something like breast, breast cancer and is going through the treatments, you know, the chemos and, and whatnot, you know, having to have your breasts being taken up, you know, cut off, you know, literally. Like, I can imagine the roller coaster of emotions. Yes. So you're allowed to have bad days. As much as we're saying you remain positive. Yes. You must be having this roller coaster of emotions. Like one time you can be, okay, I'm positive, I'm going to do this. And then the next moment, maybe you're feeling, oh man, did, it, did this really need to happen to me? You know, why all this? So it's also important for someone to know that it's okay to go through that roller coaster of emotions, right? Yes, it is very okay to go through that roller coaster because mm -hmm. if you don't go through that, uh, you are not a human being. So once, but once the one, the bad ones comes in that you can't even walk out of your house because you have been crying every day. That is when you speak to a specialist or speak to your support system. Mm -hmm. But it is normal. I went through all that roller coaster, and in the beginning, you're gonna go through that. Mm -hmm. And then that is where now your mindset, or, or you put it on the positive and remember, if I stay in bed and don't go for whatever makes me healthy, what is the outcome? Mm -hmm. So once you know the outcome of the, the emotions that have gone beyond, there is regular ones and the ones that have gone beyond. Mm -hmm. The ones that have gone beyond are going towards depression. So don't, don't let the ones that are going beyond take over. That is where you need support to speak to your support system, mm -hmm. to your therapist, to your, to your doctor, whoever is your support system. Mm -hmm. You need to let them know your emotions are rocking very, very high. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, when, when we're talking about, uh, you know, breast cancer patients and all that, we worry about their mental health, right? Yes. But then I feel like the people who are normally not or are kind of forgotten are the people who take care of these patients yes. because their mental health is also just as important because they are the ones who are with the, 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 the patients on yes. a daily basis. Yes. So what about their mental health? What would you say to those who take care? Of the of the patients the you caregivers know. are the same mm. yeah like let's say you have somebody with breast cancer you're taking care of them actually you are the one who is going through more than the one who have breast cancer it's just the same as if you have somebody who has addiction mm. the whole family have addiction because if somebody has not come home at night and they struggle with let's say addiction you also not sleeping knowing where are they mm. so the caregivers that take care of these people mm -hmm. have to also be have their mental health checked and they also have to realize that you have to have time for self-care. Self-care is number one. Take some time off. Just go to the toilet. Meditate in the toilet. Mm -hmm. But take care of yourself because you are taking care of somebody else. And so it's double because every human being have ha their own problems. But now you have taken your sister, your mother, your brother's problems with you. So you are actually worse mm -hmm. than this person having breast cancer. Mm -hmm. So take care of yourself. And if they have to go therapy, they all need therapy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, as we almost come to a close of this conversation, maybe how did that experience, you know, having to battle breast cancer, going through the treatment, you know, getting your breast cut off, how did that experience change your perspective of life? 
they have changed me by knowing like first of all beautiful things like um like cars like beauty like things like that are vanity the best thing you have to know is life is very short mm -hmm. enjoy to the fullest enjoy with beautiful things mm -hmm. uh, having to help somebody is something that will come along once you are battling cancer remember in the beginning it will be a shocking disease because you don't know the stage so and if it is gone 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 believe me the treatment is very very different mm -hmm. but it's changed the perspective of me knowing that closer to god is where you belong the, the things of the world are not what gonna cure you but believing in god having faith and um, anything that comes along that way will make you be able to handle this the god of your own understanding because we all have different um religions we all have different um way of worshiping uh so depending on what you believe in keep going close to that because it's the only way you can handle the, my perspective changed of knowing um, I have to enjoy my life. Mm. I will not dwell with negativity. I will not dwell with anybody dragging me to cancer is going to kill you. Mm. But I'll be like, no, it's a regular disease. Do you know since I was diagnosed, how many people have passed on? To be honest with you, you can just sleep and pass on. Yeah. And you can just uh, fall down here. So why would you think... Um, I gonna die of cancer. God have named our days and if you get close to God of your own understanding mm. You will be able to handle this with faith and, and all that and you'll be able to have resilience No matter what comes on your life mm -hmm. the curveball that you have grown with will make you actually thrive more I love that. Yeah. I love that now um, aside from the global uh, voice of the voiceless which is what you run you're the ceo you also have this cosmetic line and as we wind up i would love for you because with this cosmetic line what you do the people that you hire are it's not because of their cvs it's not no. because of their qualifications in school and whatnot it's because of the stories they have so you're more inclined to the to those who are vulnerable you know to those who are less fortunate to those people who might be written off in the society so if you may just speak a bit about that as you let um um people know where to find you maybe for someone who is looking for such you know and for someone who's also maybe going through who's battling breast cancer and would love to reach out to you just to get an encouragement words from you you can do that as we finish i'm a ceo of uh, likachi uh, likachi is a cosmetic company mm. and uh, we are wholesalers mostly found in our uh, best ready shops mm. we hire people that have gone through life like you are ruled out when i was little mm -hmm. i was ruled out as nobody so my company does not hire you because of education my company hires you if you have a story a lot of people don't know mm -hmm. the manager of my company is somebody that i've educated until he went to the university and once he came out of the university we had to hire him until he gets to where god will take him mm -hmm. so my company only hires you if you have a story okay. and it's not about education it's just about what have you battled in life that is how we give you a job mind sharing the social media handles maybe for someone who would love to get back to you later i am on facebook global voice of the voiceless i am on tiktok i am on instagram i have uh, email global voice of the voiceless um dot org is our website or the email is global voice of global voice of the voiceless at gmail dot com mm -hmm. we also provide the phone number uh it's it's plus you have to put plus one mm -hmm. four four three for those people that i want to call me two five three zero nine seven two okay. and i am available as a therapist for mental health addictions i also teach people something i did not say i'm a senior cosmetology okay. i teach people how to get their own skills instead of helping you all the time i can teach you how to do hair get your license and open your own salon okay. instead of going through that i teach you as private and is free of charge all right yeah okay thank you so much and thank you also for the work that you do for the community it's very commendable thank you all right this is where we call it a wrap right here on good morning kenya that was um jane jaguar and uh, she just has spoken a lot about um, managing breast cancer and i'm sure for someone who may be battling the same i hope that this interview has given you some hope to life and if you would love to meet uh, to get to uh, talk to her maybe later she has shared how you can find her my name is vivian dagwa thank you so much to each and every one of you who has been tuned in we do this again tomorrow same time and place god willing to have yourselves a lovely day bye bye